Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I think it's really hard for many of us in this country to acknowledge what is happening to the Iraqi people uh, because we know that they are suffering in a way that we would never want to suffer. And they are as innocent as uh, those of us who are civilians are innocent. Um, I think that protests like this uh, have a purpose, uh, but I think we're, we do need to change up how we're doing things. Uh, it is a Saturday, and a lot of people can come out on a Saturday, but I think rather than having scattered uh, demonstrations around the country, which are very important and good for solidarity and networking, we need to, uh, we have the numbers and we have the energy to bring an end to this now. We just need to focus on perhaps one city at a time and shut it down. Uh, and then all of a sudden, when it's no longer business as usual for us, uh, we will recognize that it's, you know, it hasn't been business as usual for the Iraqis for a long, long time. It's raining uh, just water here today. It's not raining bombs. So for us to be out here is not a big deal. Uh, I can't speak for the Iraqi people as I have not lived under uh, Saddam Hussein my entire life uh, and uh, suffered under sanctions and occupation the way they have. But in my brief time there, January, February, March of 2006, I experienced uh, how difficult occupation is. Uh, we liberated the Iraqi people from electricity. We liberated them from water. We liberated them from security. And I s support the stand of Iraq veterans against the war for immediate unconditional withdrawal, take care of the troops when they get home. And the reality is that, uh, as Aaron Watata said, an illegal war will stop when the soldiers choose to stop fighting it. And they have got to stop going. That's as plain as simple as that. They saw uh, they took an oath to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And for heaven's sakes, our greatest enemies are sitting in Washington, D.C., and we call them the legislati legislative, executive, and judicial branches. Enough is enough. What do you think the most important message for the Iraqis is? Because you're actually an American for everybody right, uh, right, that, right. that doesn't know. So from uh, a Iraqi half Iraqi yeah. American, um, what, what is your message to the Iraqi people about um, from, from Boston? I think our message to them is that, uh, and our, our only focus and obligation is immediate unconditional withdrawal of our armed men and women, of our armed forces from Iraq. And we are working hard to get that done. But we have to also respect the fact that the reason that we are working hard for that is because the Iraqi people are struggling so hard to get us the hell out of there. It is only because the resistance has been successful. Unfortunately, the only thing that changes foreign policy for the United States is when American blood is shed. It was the same thing in Vietnam. It was the same thing in Somalia. It was the same thing in Lebanon. And unfortunately, it's the same thing today. We focus on Iraq. We don't talk about Haiti. We don't talk about the occupations of other parts of the world. We're talking about Iraq because that's where Americans are dying. And I wish it weren't that way. And the Iraqis, that we have given them no other choice, that that's the only message that will say, get out. And so we say our solidarity is with the Iraqi people, with the women and children of Iraq and their loved ones, uh, and that, uh, uh, God willing, once the troops come home, that they will uh, still have enough uh, compassion left in them uh, after all the brutality that has been unleashed on them in our name, that they will allow us an opportunity uh, to try to heal for what has been done to them. They are the victims here. They are paying the ultimate price.